Three. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Mochachina Cafe here in Dearborn, Michigan. We're here today for the Super Rally and fundraiser for the Green Party of Michigan. We want to welcome you all here today, okay? And welcome to In the Green TV. We're broadcasting live from the Mochachina, excuse me, the Mochachino Cafe at 13348 Michigan Avenue in Dearborn, Michigan. And the website here is mochachino, mochachinocafe.com. Did I get that right? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. So welcome all. It's going to be a fun few hours today. You're going to hear some great speakers. We're going to do some fundraising here today. And we're so happy that you all could attend. We want to welcome in our partners on YouTube, on Zoom. We're here broadcasting live on Facebook, TikTok, and X. So if you're on any of those platforms, you can catch this meeting. Again, we're on YouTube at In The Green TV. We're asking everybody to help us build up the platform for the Michigan Green Party with this media platform and like us and subscribe over there. So if you can do that right now, if you're online or here in the uh, cafe, please go to the page and like, share, and subscribe to In The Green TV. Okay? And we're going to have some great speakers, as I said. We're going to do a fundraiser. Uh, hopefully we got the, the wonderful Jill Stein and Dr. Butch Ware coming in. We got Doug Marsh, Senate candidate, Brenda Sanders, congressional candidate, uh, congressional candidate, excuse me, um, Dr. Sammy McCool and myself, Mr. Clyde Shabazz. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the program. One of the things that we wanted to talk about with the Green Party is bringing in some new faces. I'm so happy that I've been able to go about recruiting some young people in the community. And one of them is a young man who contacted me about what, about two weeks ago was it? And he's very dynamic in this very community. And we want to introduce him because we think he is ideally the kind of person that the Green Party is looking to bring in and to help us grow the party here in Michigan and nationally, okay? So without further ado, I wanna bring up, he's like a son to me, he really is. I love this young man. Uh, Mr. Mahmoud, now I'm still working on the last name. How do I? Mohaisen. Mohaisen, is it Mohaisen? Yes, sir. All right, uh, Brother Mahmoud Mohaisen. Let's give him a warm green party applause, everybody. Come on up, my friend. All right. Talk from the heart, brother. All right, uh, good afternoon. My name is Mahmoud Mohaisen, and uh, thank you to the brother Clyde for introducing me and having me here today. Sir. Um, I joined the Green Party, I want to say, a week after I contacted you, and uh, it's mainly because there's things that I'm passionate about that I think uh, you can change with within the system, and especially through the Green Party. And a lot of people think you can't do that locally, but I think it's uh, very important to point out different ways that you can. For example, the brother uh, Sammy, who's running for BOG at Wayne State University, uh, he can do things. <laughs> he can do things for a cause that I'm very passionate about, like the Palestinian cause. Yes. One of which is divesting from more profiteering companies yes. and bringing international students from Gaza to Wayne State University, uh, where they can study in programs where they can take back to Gaza and Palestine and help the people over there. Yes. So there are yes, different right. ways. Nice, yes. nice, nice. There are different ways you can help in local government and in state government and of course in national government. So it's not uh, completely futile the way people try to make out. See, even in city council, where you can have cities divest from uh, war profiteering companies, like Dearborn <laughs> itself is invested in Lockhead uh, and different companies that fund genocide in uh, Palestine. And then there are different local initiatives that you can work towards and the Green Party is all about that. And that's why I joined the Green Party and. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm maybe running for something in the future. I don't know yet, but definitely going to work with activism closely linked to the Green Party. Thank you. Nice job. Good, Mahmoud. Good. Thank you. Great job, Mahmoud. Appreciate it. Let's give Mahmoud another one more round of applause. And Mahmoud, thank you for those comments. And you're going to be hearing more from young men and women like Mahmoud in the Green Party because we are on a recruiting push to get that 18 to 34 year old generation up into the Green Party. That's why I went out of my way and was so happy when he contacted me. We want to highlight and feature young people like him from all the communities. 
uh, one of the things that you know we were talking and we talked about earlier for the Green Party, we have a key set of values that we talk about, and it's even here on our media wall. You look at, excuse me, grassroots de democracy. Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, with grassroots democracy, that means that unlike the, two, the other two parties, we don't take corporate donations. So that allows us as a party to go directly to the people and be beholding to them instead of the corporations. And that's something that the R's and the D's, they are not realizing that the people have become aware that they're just essentially corporations being bought off by other corporations, okay? So with the Green Party, with our grassroots democracy, that allows us to communicate and work on behalf of the people directly without being beholding to corporate interests. One of the next set of values, if you look on the wall here, you see social justice. That goes to the things that we talk about, like ending the genocide in Gaza. You know, me, myself, I'd like to go a lot further in some other things, and I'd like with the coup party and banning them and that sort of thing in Netanyahu, but those are the things we're talking about. Social justice, the Green Party backs cash reparations for lineage-based uh, African Americans, those who were brought over here to build the country. And that's an unheard of, really radical social position, unlike the other two parties who don't support it. And then finally, one of my personal favorites and one that I've been running on, and that's talking about things like uh, the universal basic income, where particularly where we find in America now in these uh, times where you have the poor and the working classes struggling month to month to make ends meet, where things like you know basic necessities like their rent or their carnal being paid. So the Green Party has proposed something that's very popular in Europe and both parties have done this, and I'm going to highlight that here in America. And that's called universal basic income, wherein as if you make, let's say, $75,000 a year or less and you're working full time, you would get an additional $1,000 a month in universal basic income to help you meet your monthly expenses. Okay? Both parties experimented this with those so-called stimulus checks. Does everybody remember when... Um, um, Trump gave out a stimulus check in 16, remember? Biden turned around and did the same thing in 2020. So when you hear the politicians of both parties say, oh, we can't do that on a monthly basis because it would bust the budget, that's a lie. They tell you that so they can keep giving that money in the form of tax breaks to billionaires and rewarding the defense contractors with these huge contracts, wherein that money could be redirected to the poor and the working classes in the form of a universal basic income check directed to the people. Like for example, to do universal basic income, it basically would run the US budget about $70 billion a month. We've been giving that much to Ukraine, definitely to Israel, okay? Um, and this is where we can redirect those monies more into human needs. Does that make sense, people? Can we clap that up? Yeah, that makes sense for the people. So these are the things that the Green Party is advocating for, for you and I, to, and our families and, you know, our community leaders, so we can start having more of a people revolution. And you'll hear Jill talk about that, you know, people, uh, politics for the planet, okay? One of the other things on here is ecological wisdom. Okay, I'm getting a little feedback here. Ecological wisdom. So we know that the environment, the last 50 years, through the corporate pollution, through you know the combustion engine and things like this, all of us have to breathe and ingest the same air. Our air quality has become so poor, I don't even think we realize it, okay? Less than a mile to here, and I've worked out here with many from you know all communities. That Ford Rouge plant, it's been there literally 100 years. We live in a time now we can have green, clean factories that could produce electric automobiles and the same things that they're producing out of there now, but in a much cleaner way that's not uh, harmful to us as human beings. We have several doctors, like Dr. Sammy, you could in include that, you know, with asthma. Uh, we have many ailments behind these things, and these are the kind of things and the, the issues that we want to raise to start making us more aware about our air and our water and our soil because it's damaging us for real. And we just don't even, it seems like we've lost consciousness of that along with that in our plant and animal life, okay? And then finally, the nonviolence part. We want to do these things in a way that, you know, it builds up us all as human beings where we're not destroying each other instead of, you know, 
eliminated each other, okay? And um, I wanna move on away from that now and I wanna pivot to another part of the program where I wanna introduce some of the candidates, one of whom just walked in. This lady is so dynamic and I'm so happy that she could be here with us today. Uh, let me give you a little background about her. She's been a judge before. She served on the bench in Detroit at 36th District Court many, many years. And yes, she was a former Democrat. <laughs> we won't hold that against you, my judge. <laughs> uh, but Judge Sanders, I'm, I have, I'm joking with you, Judge. You know that. You know how silly I am. But uh, she's one of the most dynamic personalities that I've been blessed to come across uh, within this last year and the things that she advocates for the community and, and humanity in general is really really inspiring so I wanted to come up and, and, and talk about her a little bit before I call her up and she's been through it like most of us uh, when you become a green if you were something else you all may be able to identify with this you have family friends people who kind of like the greens, you know, and that kind of thing, you know, why the greens? But it's because you become an independent thinker, which is what I think is missing in politics today, where, you know, these politicians in the two parties, they pander to your lowest common denominator. They don't really speak to your intelligence. And that's what I like, and that's what we as a party are starting to get the ear of the people now. And we want to talk about and talk up these values that we represent, okay? And talking with Judge Brenda and the things that she's been advocating for, for you know the whole Southeast and Michigan region, I think it's some very dynamic ideas. But I don't want to speak on her behalf. I want to let her come up and expound and talk about those things. So without further ado, I'm going to call up and let's give her a warm Green Party and Mochaccino Cafe applause. Judge Brenda Sanders, candidate Woo! for Congress in the 12th yeah. District. Thank you. Thank you for that very generous, and, and coming from Clyde to Bass, that's a generous introduction. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I, tell you, I just want to say this. I believe I have the background to not only run for Congress, because let me tell you something, running, you can't be thin-skinned. You have to know who you are, what you represent, what you're saying. When it's challenged, you have to be able to respond and uphold the values for which you've been called to promote. And so that's why I'm here in the Green Party. Uh, being introduced to the Green Party, I am very, very impressed with your values. I, I posted them on my Facebook page. I know that they uh, somewhat mirror the values of the Democratic Party, but I don't think, I, I mean, having been a lifelong Democrat with my parents who were auto workers and government workers in Detroit, I don't think they have the heart that they used to have. And so it has been a pleasure to connect, to join the Green Party and to uphold uh, what it represents in this 2024 election season. And I'm very grateful. Let me just say one last thing. Cloud is standing. The coach is standing. No, no, no. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Judge, and I want you to expound, but if you could hit on a couple of talking points okay. on your candidacy, I, I, I want to. Okay, I'm about to do that. Yes, ma'am. Let me tell you, before I join with the Green Party, uh, I have, I've been running for Congress since 2018 in one way or another. And I say one way or another, off the ballot, primarily, as a write-in candidate. Uh, one of the things I came up with, and this is my own uh, proposal, I wanted to make Election Day, Election Day itself, a federal holiday. This is my own idea. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, so, idea. Idea. and you know why? Because I've been at the polls every election so, for a long time, for, for, before I was elected as judge. And what I don't like is that the polls 
the absentee voting is, I want to also eliminate absentee voting, except for when it used to be for people who were ill or some extreme emergency. Because what you see now at the polls is this, candidates don't get a chance to campaign and meet the voters. Because when you go to the polls on election day, you don't see much. And I know that in the city of Detroit. Now, I did campaign out county and Taylor the last election. It was much different. But the voters have gotten lazy. They're absentee voting at home, and they're not meeting the candidates. They're not coming out to hear what candidates have to say, unless you have you know, $10 million you can get on the radio with, with Miss Slotkin or something which I don't have. But I'm not intimidated by that because I've always found that grassroots a connection has never failed me. Never failed me. Uh, I believe the people are not that impressed with all of that. If you can shake their hand, look in their face, uh, call their name, greet them. I, I, I think my background has proven that voters are much more impressed with that personal touch. Uh, I did run recently uh, in 2022 for the state senate in Michigan. I had $80, $80 in my campaign uh, war chest. And there were maybe six or seven candidates in the race, some of them well known. And I was supposed to come out number two, number two with $80 in a, in a district out county Detroit, where they'd never heard of me. Allen Park, um, Taylor, um, what are some other uh, areas out there? Uh, Southgate, never heard of Brenda K. Sanders because I primarily ran as a judge in the city of Detroit. But I'm, I, let me say this, I am optimistic about running for Congress in this Green Party. Now, I, I said I want to make Election Day, a federal holiday. I would propose a bill to do so because it's, it's just a big distraction. And then the polls are started to be void of voters. They're absentee voting, and so they're absent. They're absent. You don't see them. And that's not what we want. I think we're going in a direction that we don't want and should not go for Election Day and for the voting season as a whole. I have adopted wholeheartedly the Green Party agenda. Uh, and let me tell you, I had to be sold on this agenda as a lot of my friends and family were. I mean, when I first started talking about it, they frown and, you know, raise their eyebrows and turn their head and, you know, do all that uh, body language that you, you know, if you study body language, you know something ain't right. You're going the wrong, down the wrong road. But as I learned and researched, the agenda, and the main two, ten, well, three things that Mr. Clyde Chabaz has, has uh, uh, you know, coached me in, and I've researched myself. First thing, reparations. When and most people raise the issue of reparations, I mean, they're frowns, and even from the most liberal African American voters that I have encountered, my friends, my family, oh, that's going too far. Um, you have to sell the issue, and this is no different than any other issue. It really isn't. Some issues are easier to sell than others. But let me tell you what I found out. Our president, our former president, and now I call him my former dear president, Ronald Reagan, <laughs> signed a, a, a bill into law that executive gave order. executive order. He <laughs> gave reparations to the Japanese yeah, uh, Americans here after World War II. So, uh, right? So, so now we have history. We have something, and that's the first thing in the law. If you can find a precedent, you're on your way. And so we have a precedent that is not widely advertised, and that is that Ronald Reagan uh, signed that kind of law, executive order. Executive order. That means, Mr. Chavez, you don't have to ask anybody, right? You don't have to be in Congress. You on just the sign on, <laughs> on the line as president. And it's done. And it's done. So he did that for the Japanese Americans whose family members were held in internment camps here during World War II. So we don't have to worry about that. I'll stand up 
and uh, in my, um, I say, ability as a, an advocate, say, no way. The Green Party is right on with this issue because it's been done before and we are in alignment with a precedent and, and a Republican at that, okay? Conservative Republican. Conservative Republican. Okay, the other issue is the $1,000 a month universal basic income. Um, now, I, I had an issue with that at first, but it's about not whether you have an issue, it's are you able to um, influence the people? That's what you do as leaders, leaders. If you are a leader and you can't influence your following, then you're no leader. You're no better than the people that follow you. You have to tell them, this is the way we're going now. Let's go this way. Why? Well, A, B, C. So you have to, in order to lead, you have to influence. Well, I've, I've been able to do that. With respect to the universal basic income, you all call it, some, some of you call it UBI. I say UBI? That sounds like welfare. <laughs> no. Um, and, and for a workaholic like me, I, you know, I froze in my tracks. However, having done the research, I, uh, I discovered that there's something, the advent of an artificial intelligence that's not here in full operation. But I understand that it's going to take away some jobs. It's going to decrease employment opportunities. And for many people, and for the Green Party's agenda, $65,000 a year annual income, those people will be most adversely impacted by the advent of the AI technology. Um, and so there's a $1,000, I don't know, I don't want to call it stipend, but this is a, a monthly allowance given by the government to um, account for uh, the loss of jobs. You're going to say, well, I'm trying to find a job. What's happening? It's technology. Everybody's on a computer. I, I'm used to uh, working on the, ro the railroad or something. So what we want is for our citizens to survive. We don't want our citizens knocking people over the head, robbing and scheming to get by. And believe me, it will happen if we, as a government, do not provide for, for our citizens. <clears throat> and the last thing I want to address, and I don't know how long I've been talking, is the, the proposal of the anti-hate crime bill. Let me tell you something. There's organized hate out here. There's organized, big time, hate out here. People are volunteering for it. They, it's a ring of hate. Now, I have been a victim of organized gang stalking. It's a very, uh, gripping, agonizing victimization. You'll look up a place like this, somebody will be parked across the street looking at you. You know, and they like to make themselves known. Now, they're not doing it to be clandestine. They, they, they're doing it to let you know we're following you. And it's an organized thing. And I was like, who is paying for this? That's the first question. Who's paying for this kind of organization? Okay. But I want to go here. The anti-hate crime bill is needed. It needs to be meticulous. It needs to address the organized gang stalking, which is nothing but hate in this country. And of course, with the anti-crime hate bill, I know it's, it's initially going to be proposed and initiated, if I'm bringing it to the floor of the House, uh, to address the hate directed at Afro-American citizens. And, 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 and it is appropriately brought 
and focused on African American citizens. But there's so many more victimizations out here that the anti-hate crime bill should and eventually, hopefully, if I bring it to the floor of the House as a proposal, will cover. And so those are the things. I, I do have still my own agenda. I, I, I had a radio show of the political strategist on Anchor for eight years, and all of my commentaries are, 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 are um, posted on that uh, radio show. And so you can see some of the other things that I addressed. Uh, just one other thing, and I'm going to uh, close. Environmentally, I I hate going into, this is what they want to propose, is that I would like for every business to have a restroom. And I know it seems like a small thing, but you have seniors who are out shopping, pregnant mothers with children or children, and I know about going in Detroit, and our seniors, and Sammy's raising his hand, you know, uh, we have to medicate sometimes. <laughs> And so we need bathrooms in every facility. We really do. I don't think you can run a, a business without a bathroom. No. I mean, they do a lot of it in Detroit, but I, I, I am one that I want to change that. And it's a small thing, but not for those who really need that uh, amenity. It shouldn't be an amenity. It should be a standard thing for businesses. And I can go on and on standing up here, but I thank you for listening to me. Uh, I'm Brenda K. Sanders. I'm running for Congress in the 12th District. Hold on, hold on. Read your website. How can your voters get in contact if you like? Uh, my website is brendakaysanders.com. Uh, I do have an official campaign um, telephone number and email. My telephone number for my campaign is 947-260-4000. That's my campaign number. Feel free to call and use it, ask questions, whatever. If you want to volunteer, please feel free to use that number. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Folks, let's give the wonderful and awesome Judge Brenda Sanders, candidate for the 12th District, one more awesome Mochaccino, Dearborn, <laughs> Detroit. Round of applause. Let's talk it up for you. Boop, 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 boop. Thank you, Judge. She's so awesome. I love working with her. I like that supervisor term, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so moving things. Some other oh, okay. For all of us in oh, here great. today. Um, once again, I want to just reiterate, we are broadcasting live. If you're getting in just now, we're on YouTube. Uh, we're on Zoom. We're on Facebook. Facebook. TikTok and uh, X on the X platform, okay? And uh, if you're having any technical problems, some of you trying to get on the YouTube page or the uh, Facebook page, we're doing pretty good on Twitter right now, right? Everybody can get in. So, uh, Jill and your folks, if you, any of those platforms, I think we sent it out again. But uh, keeping things right along and moving in a timely manner, um, we're going to bring up our next speaker, but before we do, I want to acknowledge again the awesome, awesome, awesome ownership and staff here at the Mocha Chino Cafe at 13348. Yeah, let's talk more. Let's give them a round of applause. Hospitality is awesome. 13348 Michigan Avenue, Dearborn, Michigan 48126. Their website is mochachinocafe.com. Phone number is 313-908-7269. Please, 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 if you can, if you're ever in the area, this place is awesomely beautiful, clean, warm, friendly, inviting. They have great everything here. Coffee, pastries, you name it. And it's a great gathering spot for these kind of conversations. And we're so eternally grateful to the Mochachino Cafe for letting us use this space today. Let's give them one more round of applause. All right, so having said that, again, I'm Clyde Chabaz. I'm the host of the TV program In the Green TV. We are the media arm of the Michigan Green Party, and if you want to contact the Green Party, you can go to migreens.org to contact us to learn more about the Green Party, and uh, we'd love to interact with you and learn and, and grow together and talk about the issues that are affecting us today and why we're here, okay? Um, 
let's see if I have any other business here. Nope, that's it. So without further ado, I'm looking at the smoothest guy. He's also my chiropractor, by the way, too. Let me stand back a little bit. He's also my chiropractor. But he's a great man. He's been in, the, in not just in the Dearborn community, but the Michigan community. He's touched a lot of lives with his generosity and his humanity. And I'm proud to not only call him my chiropractor, but a friend and also a brother. He's also running to serve humanity by running for the uh, Wayne State Board of Governors, which is a state office. And he has a lot of wisdom, love, caring, uh, intelligence that I think this man is could bring to the community and will bring to this community and I think and I know we all love and appreciate him but I think you all need to listen with the open mind and heart and let this man really talk about what this community needs because he has a lot to offer so without further ado the one and only awesome Dr. Sammy McCool Wayne State Board of Governors candidate let's give him a great applause <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Yes, sir. Whenever there is injury, pardon. Whenever there is hate, love. Whenever there is doubt, faith. Whenever there is discord, union. Whenever there is darkness, light, whatever there is sadness, joy. Oh Lord, grant me so much as to see, as not to seek, to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, and to be loved as to love, because it's in giving that we receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and in dying we are born into life eternal. I'm Sammy McCool. I'm running for the Board of Governors for Wayne State University. I want to bring values, the American, great American values that made this country so great. We became the beacon of light. I want to bring it back to our students. I want our university to start teaching courses about peace, a peace whereby the students will understand the value of understanding communication, listening, understanding other cultures, other religion, other people's aspirations. We need to graduate students who will be the ambassadors for peace. We want to follow President Kennedy's of making the Peace Corps whereby our students will go all over the world and promote our values whereby we show them how to do the infrastructures how to do the sewers, how to do the electric grid, how to take care of their personal hygiene, how to take care of their medical status. We have so much challenges right now in our world. We're facing hunger. Oh, most of the world, there is hunger. Maybe, well, there is hunger. We're facing problems with the environment. We are facing problems with diseases, cancer, diabetes. It's, it's millions and millions and millions of people are contacting these diseases. It's up to us Americans, it's up to us students, up to us because we are gifted by Lord Almighty. We have this great country, we have this great system that we need to take it and be the, use the talents that God has given us, the talents. In the Bible it says one guy was given one talent another was given two, another was given five. The one that take the one went and buried it down on the ground. And the one that took the two went and traded and get another two. The one that had the five went and traded and he had five more. So the Lord, when he came back, he said, well done. I'm gonna promote you and to do more good, more work, more everything else. And the one that buried it, he said, take him out and put him in Jahannam because he didn't take care of what he needed to do. We are the talents. We are carrying these talents. We need to go all over the world and promote justice. We need to promote human dignity. We need to promote respect all over the world. Yes. We are... There is so much thing happening right now. There is wars, 
there is needless wars happening in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Russia and the Ukraine. And these hub, these wars, if you really, really diagnose it, we are physicians, we can diagnose that these things are needlessly happening. Because if you take it and we promote it, understanding, listening, understanding the culture, understanding the religion, understanding the people's aspiration, understanding the rights to survive, we could do better than this. We could do better than to take sides. We could say we need to get together and we need to promote. We are giving you the help. We are giving you the monies. You better listen to what we have to say because we are not giving you the money to go and do war and destroy other people. We are giving, giving you the money to promote yourself and bring dignity and love and respect to you people. That's right. So we need a new generations of leaders. We need a new generations to work at the State Department. People that understand diplomacy, people that don't take sides, are influenced by other entities. We have, we have a system right now which is very unfortunate for us. Yes. Very unfortunate. I'm going to say it clear and, and, and I'm going to say it because I feel no one. For my eyes, I've seen the glory. I feel no one. Great, Sammy. Great. <laughs> the people that are influencing and extorting our decisions in Congress, at the State Department, with the with the executive branch they need to be held accountable yes. we cannot have a people that a foreign leader coming from a different country coming to our congress insulting americans and telling them they are useful idiots by others this is not acceptable in america yes. This is not acceptable when somebody comes to the United Nations and lectures the whole United Nations that he is the descendant of some King Solomon and he uses the Bible for whatever he needs to do. We are the people that know and live by the Bible. We are the people that live with God's grace. In Corinthians, it says, vengeance is mine says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. It's not up to you. It's not up to another entity. It's not up to other people or other governments to take vengeance. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Yes. Amen. And we are here. The, the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who seek and hunger for justice and righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Yes. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Yes. We need to stand up. America has to stand up to its greed. Yes. We made a greed. We have our Martin Luther King taught us America has to stand up to its creed. America has taught us, he said, we are born with certain unalloyed rights, freedom, justice, dignity, yes. and we have to live up to our creed. We have to respect other people. Nobody is better than anybody. No entity is better than anybody. We are all the children of God. When God created us, he gave us the spirit, he gave us the life, he gave us, we are his children. And not one person is better than any person. Yes. The only way you could be better is by sacrificing more and doing more to your brother. That's how you could be better in the eyes of God. Yes. Not by killing them, not by destroying them, not by showing them you are better than them, not by showing them it's mine and not yours. Let's stand up for our greed. America has to stand up to its creed. The students, they work very hard. They work so hard. They get two jobs. They borrow money from their parents. They borrow money from the banks. They borrow money from the governments. 
and they go into this journey of getting their education and then it's taking them 5, 10, 15, 20 years to repay that debt back to the banks, to the entities. Those students, the money that they're investing in the university, the university and the board of governors should be, should be held accountable not to invest that money in war machines, yes. not to invest that money in wars, not to invest that money in destroying other people. Yet, we need that money to be invested in our values. We need that money to be invested in peace, in dignity, in the human interactions where we understand each other, where we love each other. Yes, we have challenges. We have challenges. The Green Party is standing for peace, non-violence, the environment. The environment is our home. We take care of our home. We take care of our room. We tell our kids, take care of your room, clean it. And the ladies of the house are cleaning the whole house, We're cleaning the whole neighborhood, cleaning our cities from all the things that makes us sick. Let's clean our environment from pollution, from destruction, yes, yes. from anything else. We live in this planet and we live in this environment. The road to interactions and peace is by communication through non-violence. Let's sit down. We are intelligent people. We can talk to each other. We could understand each other. Don't give me this thing that I'm a look eloquent and I do this and I could work this way around like some leader comes from some place and tell us and lectures us about being eloquent. You might be eloquent in your own home or your own party or your own people. It's not going to be eloquent in America. In America, we hold people accountable who they are. Yes. Our TikTokers, the 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, they could read through you. They could read through the lies. They could read through your actions. Your body language could tell if you're telling lies or not telling lies. Yes. We, we, need to we need to have our legislators accountable. You can't invite somebody to your house and then he's telling lies and he's insulting Americans and you go and you applaud them. This is shameful. Yeah. To me, when I saw that, I felt the most shame. I said I elected these people to be there. And for them to come in and have this guy come in and lecture them about these are useful idiots by, 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 by doing their first right amendment. They, they, they're protesting outside and he's calling them useful idiots and the legislators are applauding him. This is very shameful in my America. It's not right. It's not right. We're going to hold those people accountable because America has to stand up for what is America. Yeah. America is right. America is, 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 is love. America is, is peace. America is, is people that help people. America, this is what made us great. We came together and we built one of the greatest civilizations on earth because we built it because we were our, our, our brother's keepers. We looked for each other. Now we need to look out for other countries. We need to have a new generation that go to other countries and start teaching them how to do finance. Financing this, we need to help them how to do the banking and take the fraud out from these governments that are sucking the life of blood of their people. We need to have leaders that go in and teach those people how to do that. Teach them how to do it without fraud. How to how to teach them how to to really take care of their people with love and dignity and respect. We should eliminate the fraud happening in these small countries and 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 let American be the leader in this. Yes. We need to be the leaders doing this. We are not gonna take it anymore. We for us to be accounted by other people that claim to be Americans and they really have their interest in some other country? No, we are not going to do that. If you are American, you do what American values are. Yeah. If you are American, you do what America stands for. If you are American, do what is right for America and not right for somebody else. Right. Okay? right. Um.
Dr. Sammy McCool, just as an advocate, even though I'm hosting, I want to give you an opportunity. Can you tell us just two or three things maybe that you want to do with your vision for the students at Wayne State University if elected to the Board of Governors? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep. Take your time. You need some water? I have. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Um, I was a governor of the of the Lions Club in eleven D two and I went through the education of learning and being a governor. So I studied bylaws, I studied the art of communication, I had forty two clubs that I had to visit. My 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 reign was in the during the pandemic and during the pandemic, as you know, everything shut down. But I was able, from my hospital bed, to work through my governorship and was able to bring five clubs to the district when everybody else was shutting down. I worked hard all my life. I worked in assembly line when I was 18 years old. I went to school full time, working full time and going to school full time. For seven years, I was putting 19 hours of work a day to finish my school and to do to do the right thing and continue doing it. So I know what hard work is. I know perseverance. I know what the students are going through. I know how, how hard they work, how much debt they are. When they graduate, they are in depression because they don't know what to do with their life because of the amount of debt they have. So we need to understand that those students, the monies, this should be really uh, a, a way to understand that, that we really help the students instead of just, just giving them money and knowing that they're going to pay it back to understand. They have to be really accountable for the behavior and the monies and so forth. We need to know, we let them understand, just don't just give them the money to know that this money is going to be paid back. Don't give them the saying, someday the government is going to pay it. Yeah, the behavior should be accounted for. Nothing for free, nothing for free in life. You work hard, you get your education, and then work hard and harder, and you get more education and better education and improve the, yourself. I don't want the, the monies to be divested in anything else but in our values. Money should not be given to Israel. Money should not be given to the world. Money should not be given to countries where they are in the act of war because this is really against our greed. Those, those students are working very, very, very hard and they need to understand that their money is sacred. We are good stewards of their money. So when they get it, the Board of Governors is responsible how to divest that money. We need the students to start understanding in the art of peace and diplomacy. They are very smart, they are very good. Besides being an engineer, and besides being a, in politics, besides being anything else, just take all that knowledge that you have and start investing it in the art of peace. We want you to be ambassadors of peace. We want you to be future leaders. We want you to learn how to go into the State Department and be good stewards of what the Constitution and the American values are. When we are elected to office, stand up for America and don't be influenced by other entities that are extorting you because they paid money into your campaign. Stand up for what is right. Stand up for what is justice. Stand up for what is really the, the essence of being God's children. Yes. I want the students to be the great students. We want Wayne State University to be one of the better universities in the world. And I want to respect the student work. And I want to respect what they do. And I want to make it available for them everything that as Board of Governor can help them to get through this journey, through their education. We need to shed the light that nobody else is going to come in and extort the students 
for their hard working monies and education. We want them to know what is right, what is right for America, what's right for the students, what's right for the whole world. I'm Sammy McCool, I'm running for the Board of Governors of Wayne State University, and I need your vote. America, Michigan, I need your vote on November 5th, so go to the polls and vote Sammy McCool for Governor of Wayne State University, Board of Governors. All right, thank, thank you. you. Great job, brother, thank you, brother. Good job. Okay, you're on the Zoom call? Okay, very good, all right. Thank you, Sammy, for those awesome, awesome words. Okay, and we're going to keep the program moving right along. Um, we've got another candidate. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Let me stand back. <laughs> Keeping the program moving right along. We've got another Green Party candidate. I've got him here on the phone because he's way up north at a conference. You know, Michigan is a big state on our mitten. Uh, Doug, where are you at? In Traverse City right now? I'm in West Branch. You're in West Branch. Okay. Everybody, let's give... Oops, let me hold that the feedback there. Everybody, please, from the phone, let's give the Green Party's U.S. Senatorial candidate a warm round of applause on the phone. <laughs> we got him on the phone. Push the podium back. All right. Push the podium back. Back towards me. Hey, look at the tape. It's ripping. Okay, okay. I see it. I see it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Doug, just say testing one, two, three for me, please. Can everybody hear Doug? Is a yes or no? no? Okay, Doug, you've got the room. I'm going to introduce you. Um, Doug has been a candidate for the Green Party now, and he's been crisscrossing this whole state because Michigan is a big state. Uh, he was here last time, and we had the impromptu meeting with, uh, with uh, Sammy and our gang here. But now that we have our formal fundraiser rally that we're doing today, we wanted to give Doug, who's up north in West Branch, running for Senate, running for the U.S. Senate. That means he's running against uh, Alyssa Slotkin in the Democratic Party oh, Mike and Mike Rogers from the Republican Party. And we want to allow Doug a few minutes to expound on his issues and the things he's running on. All right, Doug. All right, Go Doug. Doug. You got the floor. Go, Go ahead, on. Doug. They can hear you. Hello, Douglas P. Marsh is my name, and I'm the Green Party's candidate for U.S. Senate in Michigan. I'm 40 years old and work as a newspaper reporter and community journalist based here in West Branch, Michigan, where I live with my wife and daughter in a rental house next to an active freight rail line. <laughs> wow. Now, I'm about two more days to pay the rent for November. Each month I give the landlord around half of my take-home pay. Oh, wow. My wife works part-time to help pay for groceries. Uh, I was down in Warren uh, on Friday uh, shooting a, a spot for TV Warren, and so that's why I couldn't be there today. It is a, a long journey from the Detroit area to my house where I live, but so, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm giving half of my take-home pay to the landlord. My wife works part-time, and I'm sure most of you have similar stories to tell, and that's why I decided to run for office. Not because my story is special or different, but because we are all sharing the same struggles and watching politics happen from the outside. Living through these most recent years has convinced me now more than ever that the major political parties have nothing to offer us and that we should all join a movement to build something better. Many organizations, many people are doing important work to make health care and housing more affordable and accessible, to seek peace, protect nature, and empower people with democratic rights. The Green Party takes up all those goals and uses them to, to ground a political party. So we want more members and more candidates for more offices. We believe that regular people can and should assume positions of leadership and power to achieve the policies and outcomes that we all want. 
We know that we want Medicare for all in a single payer model with negotiated prices for medications that can make healthcare available and affordable to everyone in Michigan. So we need to elect one another into positions that make it possible. We know that the rent is too damn high. <laughs> so we need to elect one another into positions that can regulate the housing market from the position of being renters and first time home buyers. We know that education and sustainable green infrastructure investments will benefit our communities, but instead, the money we all create through our work is used to super fund not just our military, but foreign militaries. Yeah. Israel. Small portion, <laughs> small portion is used for veteran services, but we know that most of the money that we all create through our work, the largest part of it, is used to aid and assist in genocide, in apartheid, and in illegal occupations. Yes. Let's give him a hand on that, folks. <laughs> Please continue, sir. So we want a coalition of people to run for every possible office on a platform that includes reparations for slavery. Yes. Emergency funding to immediately replace all the lead pipes in Flint. Yes. Shut down oil pipelines that run through our state's rivers and lakes. All right, in a, in a study titled The Changing Nature of Political Party Membership, University of Houston political scientist Susan Scarrow concluded, quote, the paradoxical story of party membership in the early 21st century is one of numerical decline accompanied by a possible increase in political relevance, unquote. Scarrow's research suggests that in established democracies around the world, party enrollment began to decline in the 1980s or 1990s, and in addition, inactive members far outnumber active members in every country. Quote, in most cases, self-described active members make up no more than 7%, unquote. Before this campaign, for many years, I wanted to become an active member of a political party. I, my, my working life started in the agriculture industry when I was 13, and I worked at Cherry Harvest in northern Michigan. I worked around the country and around the world in education, in construction, in landscaping, transportation, in hospitality, and uh, as, a, as a first responder. I've, I've worked in journalism since 2021, and about a year and a half ago, I registered as a party member and started attending Green Party meetings. Not, not, not long today, I, I find myself sitting on Green Party's National Committee, uh, and last June I was nominated to run for federal office. It was a really short road from being disaffected and disillusioned with the political processes to feeling active and engaged with a lot of really great people and positive energy. And we need many, many more of us to become active and engaged members of a mass political party in which, in which we represent our own interests and concerns. Let's talk that up. Yes, sir, we, we, we applaud that, sir. So as I ask as the host, um, Doug, while we have you here, can you expound on two or three issues to the people here at the Mochachina Cafe in Dearborn and to those in the online community as the other candidates have done previously? Talk about two or three of the passionate issues that you as the U.S. Senate candidate are out there on the trail advocating for and if you're elected as Senator, as a Green, what you would do for them. You have the floor and the people are listening, sir. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think for the position of the United States Senate and the concerns that affect everyone in Michigan, as I said before, Medicare for all and affordable health care and regulations to bring more affordable housing to people living in the state of Michigan are huge issues for me. And in addition to that, uh, ceasefire, uh, 
ceasefire. See if I can ceasefire. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Hands down. Say no to war. All right. Also, uh, some of the previous candidates, along with myself, and you can expound on it as well. You know, we talk up the things, and you mentioned the cash reparations. But another part of the lexicon that all of us are trying to introduce into the uh, political discourse, Stephen, and that is the UBI or the Universal Basic Income. You know, it's a concept. I, I'll just describe it, but I'll let you go into your details of it, as well as how Jill has, and as well as myself and other candidates. The concept of whereas if you make a certain income at a certain level and you're working that you would get that stipend and you know our proposal of a thousand dollars a month you know you being in favor of that along as well but talk about those things as it relates to the working classes and what you know as a senator things that you can do you mentioned the housing and you mentioned the universal uh, I'm sorry you mentioned the, uh, the universal health care but talk about some of the other things too that you think that you could do and be more effective as a senator in those other areas of people's lives economically, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I think that universal basic income is a good idea in uh, a holistic economic bill of rights kind of package that would ensure that you know landlords can't simply absorb the extra income given to working class people so it's got to be a multi-pronged policy initiative to take uh yeah universal basic income to supplement the you know lowest income earners people who are working but who you know have been outpaced by inflation and cost of living in our lives and we're working harder than ever, but we're less and less able to afford the essentials of life, uh, shelter, food, uh, drinkable water, and just really very, very basic things that everybody needs. Uh, so the universal basic income is, is an excellent uh, uh, remedy for a lot, of, a lot of our struggles in addition to housing regulation that keeps short-term rentals, Airbnbs under control and stops private equity firms like BlackRock from uh, acquiring all of the private property and other other developers. Uh, and I think that, uh, yeah, the food benefits uh, should be, and, and the earned income tax credits and, and child tax credits that were all allowed to expire after they decided uh, on Capitol Hill that the pandemic was over uh, illegitimately should be reinstated as soon as possible. All right, thank you, sir. Now, I wanted to ask you just from a logistical perspective, because you're running for Senate, obviously. Like, I'm running in the four congressional seats, some of the others here, but, you know, your district, uh, like Sammy, you're running for statewide office. Can you share with us uh, what it's been like in you talking to and meeting people from the diverse areas of the state? You know, Michigan is a big state, so we got, you know, really urban Southeast Michigan here where we have this huge population. But we know as you start going up that 75, I've been up Traverse City and all those places. I know, you know, you get a lot more animals like, you know, deer and, and cows up there. But uh, how have you been received? If you could share that with your Green Party family here in Southeast Michigan, what have been some of your um, optimistic and challenges that you feel like you've had in talking to the people like in West Branch or Traverse City and some of these areas to kind of fill us in and give us an idea of what it's been like for you as the Green Party representative candidate for U.S. Senate? Well, I'll just say it's been really easy to connect with people on issues. Like when I say that it's too hard to get affordable health care and it's too easy to get bounced from, you know, a benefits plan, people understand what I'm talking about. And when hmm. I say that uh, there's too much money spent on a military that's committing atrocities abroad and even, you know, a military that's committing atrocities and, and polluting our fresh water sources here uh, in, in Michigan. Uh, you know, the military is responsible for a lot of the PFAS that have poisoned uh, water. Uh, our, our, our fresh water. Yes, sir. 
So, um, yeah, I think that it's really important that we, we get those programs under control and uh, the only way to do that is to, you know, form a new political movement and reach critical mass at the polls and in the streets to win the changes that we need. Okay. Break free from a system of politics where people who are collecting the most money win and then serve the interests of the donors and not the voters. All right. All right. So we've got a, a question from one of your fellow party members. Um, you want to stand up? You can just. Okay. I'll come over on camera so I can actually see me. Stand by. Uh, <laughs> Doug, you have a question from one of your party members. Hey, Doug. It's Stephen Boyle. Hey, I wanted to uh, ask you I know that the Senate and also the, uh, Congress gets broken into various committees with assignments and working for the people in those assignments. Do you see specific uh, Senate uh, committees that you would feel best would align with your uh, experience as well as your interests? I, I can't say that I've surveyed the menu of Senate committees as they currently exist, but uh, for the issues that concern me primarily, uh, I am very concerned about the Line 5 pipeline yes. uh, and other oil pipelines and, and yes. fracking operations in the state. Uh, so, you know, I'd uh, be interested in associated energy uh, committees and, and also I know the other senator in Michigan, he'll be the senior senator, a Democrat, uh, Gary Peters is very active in security and national defense committees. Okay. And uh, so, as as the prospective junior senator, uh, I I maybe would uh, shadow Peters and try to learn what I can about what he's doing. Uh, related to national defense and uh, national security, as uh, I know he's got a lot of programs in Michigan, so there will be... Could I, yeah. pose, could I pose potentially something like a regulatory affairs group? I think that might be a really great thing for you. Because um, I think that we ultimately do need to regulate uh, the manner in which uh, production happens for corporations and most of our regulatory groups uh, I think tend to work toward enabling as opposed to disabling things that could harm the public and thank you thank you Steven All right. and we have great news for everybody in the, in the room Jill Stein has joined us let's give her a, plan, a round of applause Woo! welcome yeah. Jill yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Jill, if you could unmute, that would be great. That's on YouTube, In the Green TV. And she's on In the Green TV, so she on can unmute. YouTube. On YouTube. If you want okay. to see her live. If you want to see her live. Okay. Pipe the audio of this way. All right. Bye. All right, she's good. All right, so thank you, Stephen, for that very, very good question of our awesome candidate, Doug. So, Doug, again, Brother, we want to thank you so much for stepping up and volunteering to serve as our candidate for the Green. You are so appreciated, brother, because we know that's a challenge the way you're crisscrossing the state and you're making it happen. And like you said, you're from the working classes. You're not from that 1%, brother. So I know what that's like. And, you know, you and your wife and your child, we thank you all so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So we want, we want to close out again because we still got a few more speakers here and everything. But do you want to let the people know if they want to get in contact with your campaign, please give your website and your phone number and how they can get in contact with you and support this movement. Go ahead, brother. You've got the floor. Yeah, hey, Clyde, thanks for having me. My website is www.electmarsh.us. That's www.electmarsh.us. And uh, you can get in touch with me there. All right. Do you want to leave a, a contact phone number? 
All right, brother. Happy uh, campaigning on the trail out there. I know. I, now, um, I asked you specifically. Did you give my? Uh, I asked you to give my salutations to Tom and Linda. I don't know if you got a chance to let them know up there in uh, Traverse City. You did meet with them, right? Oh yeah. All right. Very good. And just as a side note to those in the room and those online, Tom and Linda Mayer are Green Party members who live up in Traverse City, which I've visited them up there. They've been very gracious to me way back in 08 when I met them when I, I was supporting Cynthia McKinney and I was running against John Conyers that year. But they're up in Traverse City and Tom is actually, folks, an elected Green. He actually holds a position, okay? Let's celebrate that, right? <laughs> right. We do have Green Party members in Michigan that have won, okay? Yes, so we wanted to highlight that and thank Tom and Linda for all they do up in the in the uh, upper part of Michigan and supporting us. All right, thank you again, Doug. We're gonna let you go, sir. Happy, be safe out there in the trails and uh, happy campaigning. Best to you and your family. Thank you, brother. Thanks, nice right. Thank you. All right. All right. So we're gonna keep the program. We lost you. We lost you. That's okay. We'll get her back. I'm sure. All right. We're gonna keep the program. Uh, listen, that's his phone. That's Luke's. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to keep the program moving right along. And uh, once again, though, we want to thank everybody here at the Mochachina Cafe. We want to announce the great support that this awesome place has given us. We're broadcasting live. This is the Michigan Green Party Super Rally and Fundraiser uh, being held here on behalf of our media program in the Green TV. All right. And we're broadcasting live from the Mochaccino Cafe at 13348 Michigan Avenue in Dearborn, Michigan, 48126. Uh, number is 313-908-7269. Their website is themochaccinocafe.com. And we want to thank again the owner and Mona and uh, Maria and all those patrons here. They have the best coffee, the best pastries, but the best service. They're so friendly and awesome over here. If you're ever in the area, please, please, please come support this business. And we thank you so much, okay? And I can see Maria smiling over there. Maria, we appreciate you, dear. <laughs> so thanks again. But keeping the program moving right along, um, we had Jill, but we lost her, but I think we're going to get her back here shortly because we want to hear a few words from her. And we've heard from all these awesome candidates, okay? So the next one is, I'm going to introduce me. Yeah, call me up. <laughs> so... I'm going to switch roles now. As the host, I actually host the TV program in the green, but in the interest of showing some, you know, some uh, decorum of keeping the media part of Clyde away from the candidate part of Clyde, I'm going to have Stephen bring me up as a candidate, and then I'm going to expound on the issues that are dear to me. So I'll turn it over to Stephen. Thank you. So, hi, everybody. Um, you know, a little bit about me is. Clyde has said uh, it's important for us to bring people into all of the various offices on our ballots. It's extremely important for us to engage a wider, broader audience on all of the issues that are in front of us through elected office. So um, I got to know Clyde back in 2014, I believe it was. I joined the Green Party. I joined the Green Party as an activist around Occupy Detroit myself. I literally came in to do media work at the Green Convention. And I literally heard the, the call for nominees and I said, well, you mean I can like nominate myself from the floor? And they said, yeah, yeah. So you know what I did was I nominated myself for uh, Congress to the 14th District and I ran against Brenda Lawrence. So we're all, you know, potentially the candidates we've been seeking for. You know, don't exclude yourself from potentially being that voice that has to represent not only your own interests, but also those that your constituents uh, have. Now, um, Clyde, I've gotten to know for a number of years now. I got to know Tom Meyer. Uh, Tom Meyer, uh, I've sat with Lou uh, Novak and Tom, and we've had lots of conversation about the Greens and how can we move things forward. Um, we've had convention, we've had uh, party gatherings where people go through workshops and we've learned more 
uh, skills together. And it's important for us to actually return to some of these things that haven't been happening recently, but with enough presence, we're going to bring that back. And Clyde, as the host for In the Green TV, is definitely one of these movers and shakers that's pushing the party forward. And I think that running for Congress is an awesome spot for him. Now, he is uh, running against a, shall we say, a candidate that kind of got into office through the work of her husband hmm. yeah. and in carrying forward the name carries forward the legacy and so forth what we can do is we can actually acknowledge legacies as they've happened and realize that we cannot continue to look in the rear view mirror for where the future is going Right. It doesn't work. Right. Right. If you keep looking in the rearview mirror, you know what's going to happen. You're going to wind up in an accident. You're not looking at what's important, and that's what's in front of you. You can reference, but don't live into the past, please. So um, I want to have people look at the fact that we've had 150 years of this duopoly. It's time for us to move on, and that's by bringing in new people that will do things like bring ranked choice voting up on the ballot for everybody across this country. It's something that we do within our party. It's time for us to bring it into the states. It's time for us to actually enact it across the nation. So without any ado, I'm going to bring Clyde up here in part to introduce himself because I know as a mover and shaker he's got a lot of stories to tell. So, thank you. All right, Clyde. Woo! Go, Clyde. Go, go, go. Go, Clyde. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Stephen. Hi, right, folks. I'm Clyde Shabazz. I'm running for the U.S. Congress in the 6th District, which is a huge district, in, in which is currently held by Democrat Debbie Dingell. And that name, the Dingell name, is synonymous with, you know, like almost like an institution here in Michigan. Okay, her husband, John Dingell, served. He was good friends with the, you know, he had some ties to the labor movement and that sort of thing, too. And, you know, he... He passed away after serving so many years. I look at people like John Dingle and John Conyers, of whom I ran against, you know, many years ago, as what I call uh, politically relics of the past in terms of what was needed then. But again, as we stated earlier in some conversations, we're in a new millennial now. You know, they were 19th century. This is the 20th century. The microchip and the internet are pieces of technology that essentially have shrunk the whole globe now, where we currently right now are talking to people literally around the world, to millions and billions potentially. And having said that, based on some of the other statements that you heard here today, things would, like Dr. Uh, Sammy McCool talked about, investing in people, uh, ending wars, uh, our young activists who we brought in, Mahmoud, who's agreeing now, you know, wanting to see young students from Palestine being given visas to come over here and study so they can take those life skills back to Gaza and help their people there. Things with like um, Judge Brenda Sanders, the 12th candidate, has said about the environment. So, and even Doug and the things that he talked about with the uh, housing, with the, um, what, what was the other things he hit, put on, Steve, on, you hit on housing and uh, health care, nationalized health care. If you hear a common theme around all of these issues that we're talking about, it's taking money that's being put in the hands of the 1%, APAC, the defense contractors, blah, blah, blah. We know those people who, and who they are, and re-channeling that money back into people. But it's going to take the people <laughs> themselves by voting for us, joining the party, and even running some candidates like us to get that done. You heard Doug elaborate on that. So that, those are the things that drew me into the party almost 20 years ago and that still keep me here today. And one of the things that I particularly wanted to emphasize with me, and I've shared this with Stephen and Sammy and some of the others, and that's bringing in younger people like we have in this room here. We want to reach as many of them as possible. We want them to join. So that's why I use the mathematical number three, which is a good change number. You know, just like, you know, you have the Republicans and the Democrats. Think about it. You add in the Green Party, that third number, that's a change number. That 
represents a big difference in a what I want to call a, a paradigm shift, if you will, in how people perceive themselves and political parties. Again, go back to the values, grassroots democracy, not big corporate money controlling both sides. Okay, so these are the things that are driving me to run as a candidate. And I've got a, a couple of standout issues, but again, I'm going to harp back to my universal basic income or UBI. So like when I'm campaigning, I'm down river talking to folks in uh, Taylor, down in Allen Park, Melvindale, uh, down in Brownstown Township, um, Brownstown Township, um, further down, even going down Monroe, you will find you have a lot of these factories down there, but you have people working in those factories for Ford and what have you. But then you have a lot of people just working regular jobs. They're working at the gas station, the convenience store, they're working in the retail jobs, and they're not even making $15 an hour. Our minimum wage in this country is still, what, $7.25? That's not a livable wage. People don't go through that in other developed countries. We've only had to go through that over here because the people haven't stood up enough to demand that kind of change. So these are the things that I'm running on as a candidate to change that dynamic and to get more support amongst our people. But that universal basic income and of course the reparations being of African American descent, uh, I'm going to push that and, and, and the people are starting to come around to that. But the bigger issue for me um, with the universal basic income, because it's something that I know is affecting many communities. Right down the street from here, right around the corner on Ford Road, there's a company called Precision, okay? I work for this company. Many of the people who live in this community, from the Arab community, there's working class Arabs, there's working class whites, some in the Teamsters. I wanted to highlight that to G. I was hoping she'd be here because we actually have some Teamsters that work there. And we were highlighting something because I heard her say something about uh, she got the endorsement of the Arab American Council, but why aren't these unions backing her too? And they did something different this year where like traditionally the UAW, they, they talked bad about Biden but still endorsed him. The Teamsters aren't endorsing anybody. But eventually, I think a person like Jill should be looking to get that endorsement. That would be huge. And in talking to my working class brothers and sisters over there, because I was working part that time there too, just so you know, as, as a side note, as a car transporter. So these new four cars that are coming out, the electric, uh, F-150, and like the, um, the Ford GT, nice cars. These cars are the cars of the future, I think, that should be promoting more because they help our environment. You see the ecological wisdom there. As he had talked about early as a medical doctor, you've heard Jill talked about, our toxic interactions with all this pollution in our air from these planes, from these combustion engine vehicles, from these factories like the Ford Rouge plant, which is right around the corner from here, they pollute many toxins into the air and we're living our lives every day. We're not realizing we're ingesting this into our bodies, into our systems. And it's having a long-term effect on our cognitive and our physical well-being. And we have to really start becoming aware of that as humans. Not as the air, as the black or white, because it all affects us all. We all share the same air and water. Does that make sense? So, thank you. So, having that environmental wisdom, having the, the sense of social justice for the people, these are the things that are driving me as a congressional candidate. That was Mark from the Jill Stein campaign out of North Carolina. And uh, Lou, we got any word yet on this, whether she can get back in yet or not? She's getting on the plane. All right, so Jill was getting on the plane, so we were trying to catch her before. <laughs> But we want to keep the uh, the program moving right along. Let me stand back a little bit. But before I do, I see we've got some new people here. We want to welcome you all. Thank you again. You're at the Michigan Green Party Super Rally and Fundraiser. And um, this is being sponsored by the media arm of the Michigan Green Party, which is In The Green TV. We're asking everybody here to help support the channel by becoming a subscriber to help us build up our subscriber base. Go to In The Green TV on YouTube and subscribe and then you can become part of our you know membership there but before we go any further once again I've been doing this all day we want to thank the Mochachina Cafe 
here at 13348 Michigan Avenue in Dearborn, Michigan, 48126. Their phone number is 313-908-7269. Their website is mochachinacafe.com, and it's under the management of Mona and Maria, and they give great service. So if you're ever in the neighborhood here in Dearborn, please, please come patronize this establishment. They have the best of everything, but more than that, they have the best service. You will be treated so well here. We thank you so much. Now, earlier I was speaking as the candidate, and I want to close out. I'm Clyde Shabazz. I'm running for the um, sixth congressional district against Debbie Dingle, and I hit on a few talking points that I wanted to close out on. And those were the issues of the environment, the social justice, the ecological wisdom, and the nonviolence part of what the Green Party believes. We believe we can build all of these uh, issues around the platform with the united front of the people who you see here that look like yourself. We know that a very few rich 1% have bought off the politicians in both the R's and the D's to keep the people divided. Well, the Green Party, as some of the other members heard me say earlier, that number three is a change number. So you have the Republicans and the Democrats, which represents two parties, but to bust up or move away that duopoly, you have the Green Party. And what you see now is us being the alternative to those two parties. So when people say, well, I might just sit at home today, I don't want to vote, I don't like either party. Now they don't have an excuse because they have a party that represents their values. Okay, and that's the thing that we're trying to get people to see amongst ourselves is that this party represents my values, so you don't have to feel like you're voting for a lesser of two evils, which most people have, okay, <laughs> these last 50 some odd years. So, But anyway, again, I'm Clyde Shabazz. If you want to reach me, my campaign website is VoteClydeShabazz.com. I'm running on an issue of end the genocide in Gaza. I want embargo. I actually want to see the Likud party banned, and I want Netanyahu put in prison for life or under the jail. I'm running on a universal basic income agenda, which represents all working class people, as I stated earlier. Um, you know, regardless if you're making $75,000 a year or less, you're working full time, you get that $1,000 a month UBI check. Check out my, I've got videos up on my website. You can check me out there, okay? Also, I'm running on the issue of cash reparations. I propose under my proposal lineage-based reparations, whereas for foundational black Americans or African Americans who were born here even before the country uh, officially became official in uh, 1776, our people were here building America. We actually built, thank you, Eric, that feedback is annoying. <laughs> we were actually here building America. We built Wall Street, the actual Wall Street on the New York Stock Exchange. We built the White House, we built the railroads, we built the early infrastructure of America that has never been compensated. So when we talk to people, and a lot of people who are maybe more recent immigrants may not know this information, so they'll say, well, you know, if you just work hard like most immigrants and that sort of thing, there would have been no America to come to had our people not built and laid the found early foundations of that infrastructure of America to be the economic and military superpower that it is today. So now their descendants, which is like people like me, are calling for that reparations to be paid out. And the Green Party wholeheartedly, Jill Stein on down, supports that policy. Um, if you need more education about it and want to study the issue, there's a couple of YouTube videos. One is called Reparations Who Owes Us and Why, and it's a guy named Professor Black Truth. It's about an hour and a half long, but it details how the modern banking, insurance, and railroad industries that formed in America laid the foundations for what we see today globally in how the banking and finance structure is set up. It was set up because of chattel slavery. Chattel slavery wasn't just about the labor of black people picking cotton in the South and then the North not liking that because they had an economic advantage and then growing in that sense what it was about, it was a banking, insurance, and transportation system that actually built up the modern America that we see today. And these companies that, oh, they're still in place. And we have the, the names, we have the receipts on them. Um, banks like uh, Chase Bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they all financed 
uh, slave plantation owners from the little ham and egg farmer who had one or two slaves to people like Thomas Jefferson who owned 3,000 slaves. And there were many of them who owned that. But these banks and insurance companies financed that so these industries could grow because the, the early commodity was tobacco, then it was cotton. But while those commodities were being sold, black bodies on Wall Street were being sold as well. Thomas Willing, the, uh, the founder of the New York Stock Exchange, was a slave owner. You all don't know this because it's not taught in immigrant education and it's certainly not taught in the American public school system. So we have to educate you as we're bringing you in as to why these policies are needed. But we have people in place to give you that information and we are definitely in the information age of social media now and we think that the information is there for you all to take with it and run with it. This is why you and people like yourself, Michael, why I reached out to you and you reached out to me, this becomes important. Um, this is my little, my, my, what I call, he's like my son, almost, okay? <laughs> I want to get to a space, particularly with you young people in here, listen carefully. I want to get to a space, I don't care if you're black, white, Arabic, uh, Latino, whatever. We want to educate you on all these issues so you can be just as knowledgeable about reparations and somebody black can be just as knowledgeable about Gaza. Somebody Latino can be just as knowledgeable about universal basic income as somebody else. Makes sense? But we all share these same common values as Americans and as more than that, as human beings. Because that's the most important thing. Would you all agree with that? Very good. Pardon? 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Okay. All right. So we've got about 30 minutes left in the program. And there's a couple of things that I want to pivot away from from the candidate perspective. And we want to go into our what we call our fundraiser and giveaway point right now, okay? So I do have some goodies here, and I'm gonna save the big one for last, please. Just allow me. Do we wanna do a giveaway or we wanna, what do you think? You wanna give away one more? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. So our first item is campaign. This here, remember I said we have, um, the name of our TV show is In the Green TV, all right? So we have here, uh, in the green TV coffee mug, and we want to start a bidding war. Okay, so we'll start it off at what? Five bucks? Ten bucks? <laughs> All right, we'll start the bidding at five bucks. Anybody want to buy the, uh -oh, the in the green TV? Starting, I mean coffee mug, starting at five bucks. Huh? Well, okay, we got better one right here. Do we have six bucks? We got five, five, and we got six, 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 six bucks. We got six bucks over here. <laughs> ten bucks. Uh-oh, he's up to, up to ten bucks. We got ten bucks, ten bucks, ten bucks. We're going up higher for In the Green TV coffee bug. Going once, going twice. Seven bucks. Oh, he is at ten. Twelve bucks. Twelve bucks going here to the gentle lady in the back over here for the green. Fifteen bucks. Fifteen bucks over here for the in the green. <laughs> One more dollar for you. Sixteen. Sixteen bucks going once, going twice. Sold to the gentle lady over there for the in the green TV. Let's give her a warm round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you. Very good. I didn't know I had skills like that to, as, as a uh, as a guy that can you know do auctions. Okay, all right. All right, I got some good stuff here next. Probably do cash app or other stuff, you know. So next we have some music for sale. These are actually Jill Stein CDs. Jill, she sings. Does she yeah. sing? Oh, so Jill sings. I didn't know that. I sing too. So I, I never heard her sing, but I sing too. So I, I'm, I'm, I got to hear her sing. Okay. So we have some Jill Stein CDs. Uh, same thing. We'll start these off. I've got one. It's called. Well, we got two. Somebody's sister. We're going to start the bidding off on this one for five bucks. Jill Stein CD. Our presidential nominee. This is rare collection. Five bucks going once. Can we get six? We got five bucks right here. Do I see six bucks for Jill Stein? Do I see six? Six bucks, six bucks. Five bucks right here. Going once. Oh, well, we got six bucks over here for Jill Stein CD. Can we get seven bucks for Jill Stein? Jill Stein CD singing. Our president. Somebody's sister. What you got? You got to go higher. What you say? Seven bucks? Seven bucks? We got eight bucks right here for Jill Stein, somebody's sister. Eight bucks. Can we get nine bucks? Anybody going nine? Going once? Going twice? Sold. 
to the lady right here for eight bucks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Give her a hand. I'll take your money. All right. So this next, <laughs> we got one more. Pay later. Trying to get twenty bucks for it. All right. So they want to start. This is the same thing. Though. We want to. We want to start this one. We'll start this one at nine bucks. Yeah. We'll start this one at nine bucks. All right. Go on once. Anybody want Jill Stein CD? We got the second one over here. Over here in the corner. Anybody? Jill Stein? Nope. We got nine bucks right here. Can we go ten bucks? Jill ten Stein. Bucks. We got ten bucks right here. Go on once. Go on once. Can we go eleven? Eleven looking for eleven bucks right here. Jill Stein for president. She sings. Come on now. What's the name of this sister? Sister? No. Oh, we got dancing and everything. Sister. Friends of Earth. This is Jill Stein, your presidential Somebody's nominee. Sister, yeah. Somebody's sister. 15. We got 15 bucks right here. Can we go 16 bucks over here? 16, 16. 15 going once, 15 going twice. Sold to the gentleman right here. Thank you, sir. Let's give him a round of applause for all our biddies. All right. So this next one. Is this Ralph here too? Yeah. Oh. Well, I want this one to crash the party's the most famous. Okay. So this next one is a. Uh, what year did he run, by the way? I'm sorry. This was like 2002. Okay, so this next is a book that's up for sale by our t year 2000 Green Party nominee. You probably heard of him, Ralph Nader. He's always been a consumer of Some of you younger millennials who just born in this, you may not know about him, but Ralph Nader. He started out really in the 70s. He was a consumer advocate, making sure like cars were safe and that sort of thing to put pressure on the government, not to just let, you know, yeah, but like seat belts in the car. You can thank Ralph Nader for that. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's correct. But anyway, he has a book called Crashing the Party. It's a book that criticizes the two party duopoly. And it's a signed book by actually Ralph Nader. This was not, oh, come on, Eric, come on, you, you're killing me, man. <laughs> this was not, this was signed. Okay, it's not signed, but it's for sale. What we want to start the bidding off on this? How much you pay for this? So, Ten bucks? At least $15. All right, so $15. We'll start the bidding at $15. Ralph Nader's book, Crashing the Party. We got one right here, 15 Okay, 15 20 20 right here from the man in the back. Can we go 21 21 Can we beat 21 25 education. 25 bucks right here. 25 bucks right here. 30 30 bucks right here. <laughs> Can we go 31 31 Can we get 31 Going once, going twice. Sold to the gentleman back there for 30 bucks. Ralph Nader's crashing the party. Now this next one is going to be real good. All right. Uh, we're going to give one of these to Jill. It's, listen, everybody in the back, I want you to hear this too. Everybody in the back, pay attention. Listen up. Everybody who's supporting here today, listen up. This next item, this is called Duopoly. This is a board game that you can play with your family and friends. It's called Duopoly, like you've heard of Monopoly before. This board game was actually created by one of our own Green Party members. Please stand up, sir. This gentleman right here, Mr. Eric Beauregard. And it talks about the Republicans. It's a fun game to play while you learn politics, okay? He incorporated this. This is a real game. You can buy this book. I mean, sorry, this board game, all right? So we're going to start off the bidding on this today. This is our biggest item at 50 bucks. We're actually going to give one of these to Jill so when she's on the road at the airport with her staff, they can play this game. We're going to give one to her, okay? That's what we bought two one for. So we're going to start duopoly. We're going to start this at 50 bucks. Can we go 50 bucks? Anybody duopoly today for 50 bucks? Going once? Can we get any bidders? Duopoly, the board game. 50 bucks. Hmm? Anybody? Oh, we can't give it away. I got it. All right, 50 bucks. Can we go 51? 51 bucks for duopoly. Anybody? Huh? Anybody? No? All right, so going once, going twice, sold to the gentleman here. Duopoly, it's all yours, sir. Thank you, sir. How do I pay? How do I you can pay? turn all monies in to oh, yeah. Mr. Beauregard. <laughs> yeah, you can give it to you. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can just donate it to a committee. All right. So where are we at in terms? How are we look in terms of time? Where are we at? I'm working up over here. Maybe 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. So I'm, while I'm up here, we got about 15 minutes left. 
Some of you young people just walked in. Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask of the Green Party so far? Anything? Okay. Feel free to ask. Can I get maybe a few minutes? Okay, that's fine. By committee, is it okay? Uh, Mr. Boyle wants to come up and give a few minutes of, of, of speech and edifying. Come on up, sir. For sure. Yes. Let me catch a break. I need a little. I need a little air. Yeah, you need some air. I see. That. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we need to honor our streams, but I don't want to honor the streams on Clyde's face. Woo! Who do you Go ahead, take care of that. Thank you. Um, so I I introduced Clyde and I told a little bit about how I ran in uh, 2014, basically coming to a convention saying, and it was a nominating convention, and just putting my name into the hat. So what's led beyond that for myself? I am. Currently a candidate. This year I'm a candidate for Wayne County Commissioner in District 5, which is uh, central and it's pretty much the central part of Detroit. Okay, a little bit north north central. We'll put it that way. Um, so it, in that position, a lot of the things that the county handles are infrastructure issues for our county. That includes roads, that includes our water infrastructure, it includes the pollution that we experience in the county. And then the county runs all the way from Harper Woods all the way down to Romulus. So it's a very large area. Um, and it's an interesting space in the sense that um, 13th District uh, Congressional seat is completely within Wayne County. Um, now the sad part is, is I was considering running for that position. We had another person in the party step up and say that they were interested in that. We wound up having our congressional candidate uh, challenged by the clerk and, and uh, right now it's in the Court of Appeals, we'll put it that way. So, what was the, the basis of the change? I that is, I think, something we need to employ some reporters to get to get the clerk to come out with the reporters so that it's in the public light. Right now, we're we need to get a little bit more going on with that exposure, and unfortunately, uh, we're reaching out. We're trying to do what we can at the moment. Um, can I say something about that? <coughs> also, it may be a political challenge because I know the candidate involved and I believe they were formally challenged the city of Detroit clerk uh Janice Wendry. Yes, yes. Um but, but so this is what sorry to interject here Steve. This is Wayne County. This is Kathy Garrett. This, right. This oh, isn't Kathy this oh, isn't okay. uh Janice it's Wendry. a different oh, okay. this is the it was a different position that oh. she's running for and oh. so it's actually controlled by the county clerk. Oh, okay, yeah. Um although the the city clerk is involved in what's going on with the county elections commission since the city has a very large representation within the county. Um, my my uh, county district uh, position is completely within Detroit. It is not uh, into any other municipality other than Detroit. Um, so I realize Detroit's issues. As a person who literally travels around the city by bus and by bicycle, I see the city at a very different level than if you're just whizzing by in a car. I have literally called our highways the ditches of denial because we're denying the community that have been suffering from the fact that these highways run right past them and they encourage white flight from the city. That meant that the opportunities didn't happen for these people. One of our problems with opportunity is, is we need to have pathways of access to opportunity. If you don't have access to the opportunity, it does not truly exist for you. So that's important for us to actually see this. And what I've been trying to talk about, and many, you know, we've been discussing, is there's access within the Green Party to bring more people up that have different perspectives and look at the, the the core values our party represents as something that is as truly uh, something that we need to work toward because we've actually had what would be considered corporate capture of this country through our major parties and what they've been doing um, and also our state department as was referred as well um, our state department spreads the corporatization of the world through 
uh, its alliance with corporate uh, backing. Um, as, a per as a person that's been an activist on the ground, I uh, spearheaded with a group uh, that was forming called the Detroit Coalition Against Tar Sands. Back in 2013, there was a large and growing black pile at the base of the Ambassador uh, Bridge. That pile was a pile of petroleum coke. Petroleum coke is a distillate uh, re residual from creating diesel fuel and gasoline. Uh, Marathon Refinery had chosen to open up its doors to processing uh, crude oil, what they call heavy sour crude oil, crude oil. Um, and it comes through a pipeline that Enbridge basically runs. Enbridge, uh, many people have been hearing about Enbridge Line 5. Line 5 comes uh, down across the Straits of Mackinac and those pipelines that are at the base of the Straits of Mackinac are not in very good position. They actually found several of the structural supports had uh, rusted through and the pipeline was literally in, in the water just waving around. So we needed to do, you know, do some desperate repair and it's difficult to work in that, that space. But this party has, has been very supportive of the shutdown line five. We also have worked when the Kalamazoo River had the largest inland oil spill in this country's history uh, in western Michigan. And I was there around that as well. Um, so we, and I'm concerned about the pollution in my own neighborhood. I live in a light industry neighborhood, but when I walk home at night, I literally am smelling dioxin in the air. Dioxin has a six sweet like smell that's it's not it's not healthy it leads to carcinogens in your body and uh, we need to deal with that our one thing I was talking about with the access opportunity is we need to have different modes of access available so when somebody says listen I don't have a car I don't have the means to be able to get a car do we have a transit system that actually works for them and it gets them to where they need to be in a timely manner so that they can hold on to a job because a lot of people are losing their job literally because the systems aren't taking care of their true needs and that's to be consistent and show up on time and so we need to also appeal to uh, our corporate uh, employers to say listen when somebody's taking these these forms of transit you need to realize the the risk of them coming in on time is based on whether this system that they're using is working for them or not. And it would actually be beneficial for more corporate sponsorship to go into our modes of transportation. Um, one thing that I would like to champion, and this is even beyond the position that I'm looking at, I want to talk about automation tax. As we have removed human labor from the way that goods are produced by corporations, they have moved toward capital outlays that create robots, invest in uh, AI and things like this. As we move more human bodies out of the workforce, we no longer have a tax base. That, those taxes are what takes care of the, the greater good for all. So what we need to do is go back to the corporations and say, as you displace human labor, we need the taxes that were being paid by those that you've displaced to be brought back into this system. So as people talk about how do we fund UBI, the universal basic income, let's take a look at how we've displaced humans and use that as part of how do we fund UBI so that everybody's month doesn't start at zero. Everybody's month starts off with, I have something coming and it's going to take care of my basic needs because this is truly a basic income such that people that don't have, uh, shall we say, the ability to afford um, even having a home to live in, uh, we can actually tar start taking care of people. Um, our, our grocery system needs to be looked at, how our food is grown needs to be looked at, our soil is depleted across the country and so much of the food that we eat really truly is not nourishing. It fills you but it doesn't fill you very long. You become hungry not very long after eating it and it's because of the way that it is produced. And I know that Jill Stein is, is very much part of this infrastructure change that we must have.
would give Sammy some time to want to close up. Let's bring Sammy back up. I, I did want to just say hello to everybody and thank you. If you happen to be within Wayne County, talk with your friends that might be in District 5. Running real quick, announce your name and, and how people can So my name is Stephen Boyle. It's S-T-E-P-H-E-N-B-O-Y-L-E. -E. Um, you can reach me by phone at 313-757-2619. You can email sboyledetroit at gmail.com. That'll reach me. Uh, that is my campaign email. Thank you, Steve. And thank you. You'll find me on TikTok and on Facebook. Are you related to Just Boyle? No. Wake up, Circuit Judge. I am not. <laughs> judges, no judges. My name was one of those yeah. that came through Staten Island. The oh. old Boyle, they lopped the O off. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. So, Clyde, yes, I've been looking for this book for some time. Actually, I was uh, watching Democracy Now! and uh, Ralph Nader came on the scene. Ralph Nader is my hero, my mentor. We share lots of things with Ralph Nader. He's a fellow Lebanese. Oh, I didn't know that! Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. He wrote uh, the first book, Unsafe at Any Speed. Uh, he's considered Ralph Nader is the most important private American of the 20th century. Uh, Ralph Nader, uh, by the way, uh, Mira, he uh, he wrote a book about Lebanese food. His parents love Lebanese food, so it's all about Lebanese food. <laughs> uh, it was a bestseller too. So Ralph Nader was talking about the war in Gaza and Palestine. The Israeli army has dropped over 150,000 precision made bombs right into the small, small geography of oh, Gaza. 150,000 precision bombs. Now, they're saying the total fatalities in Gaza is about 41,000. They want to minimize the number of casualties on both sides. The Palestinian Ministry of Health is saying because they don't want people to revolt against them. And of course, the Israeli army is saying, oh, you know, we are such a humane and this, we only killed 41,000 people and only maybe one of them was innocent. Maybe one of the 41,000. Ralph Nader is saying 150,000 decision made bombs, beside the dumb bombs, beside the other bombs. If one bomb kills one person, one precision bomb, this is 150,000. In his studies, he said there's over 300,000 people dying in Gaza right now. 300,000. And if you want to continue with this, for the end of the year, it's going to be 600,000 people dying in Gaza with the weapons that are made where? United States. And given to who? Israel. And dumped where? Palestine. Folks, we need to wake up. America, wake up. Yes. It's not our values. That's right. We don't do this as Americans. That's right. We are Americans. We promote peace. We give. We let people just live in dignity and That's life. Right. We ahead. don't send precision bombs to kill thousands and thousands, thousands of people. Right. Three hundred thousand people are dead right now. And it's gonna be six hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year. And these are all documented in here. And these are studies. Go ahead. Go ahead. For God's sake, let's wake up. Yes. Let's wake up to the truth. Yes. We are not going to let people be, be intimidated no. by people oh, that that's right. swear out the truth. Oh, yeah, the right. people coming up and telling us, yes. oh, if you only kill, yes. you know, the terrorists. That's and right. maybe, maybe one or maybe <laughs> ten, you know, they, they will mess or they are this. <laughs> you know, we're living in a... 2024, where people have internet, where the TikTokers and the Instagrammers could read through you, could read through your lies, could read through your body language. Don't play us, man. Don't play us. You play Americans. Americans are smart people. Don't don't take advantage of our kindness. Don't extort us. 
enough is enough. The time is to stand up for the truth. America has to stand up for its values. We don't sell precision bombs to kill 150,000, 300,000, and 600,000 people. We are better than that. America is much better than that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah.